Hi there. Uh, today we're going to talk about the thing on the... Ah, better. The thing on the board back there, called molar concentration and molarity. And this is going to be a really important tool for us as we start talking about like how to actually do chemistry in a lab like this. So if we know how to use molar concentration and molarity, we can actually start dealing with, let's say, uh, liquids and acids and bases. And those are the kinds of things that we really need in our class. The good news is this is not a particularly typical concept. So uh, with the clap of a hand, we can start talking about definitions. So when we talk about solution and concentration, what we're really talking about is if they're dilute or concentrate, we're used to this, like the longer you leave a tea bag in a glass of hot water, the darker and darker the tea becomes, and things like that. These are words we're used to, and in chemistry they carry the same meaning. And they're going to mean just how much solute, remember that's the thing being dissolved, is dissolved into our solvent, the thing doing the dissolving. In a normal chemistry class like this, our solvent is almost always going to be water, but for kind of higher level chemistry this could be any number of things like acetone or ethanol or... But for now, let's just stick with water. It's easy to work with. Most things that we work with are going to dissolve into it, and it's abundant. So those reasons, we're just going to be dissolving things into water and saying how concentrated we can we make it, which brings to mind a really good example. So, ah, yes, this should do nicely. It's a, uh, a snow day, and, well... Maybe as some meteorologists expected, it's not actually doing anything until after school's over. But besides the point, what that means is some of this road salt right here, that's not needed anymore. So let's grab some of that and head back upstairs. A few moments later. Ah, here we are again. So I've got the road salt that we collected, and that's just a mixture of different chlorides, calcium chloride, mainly just sodium chloride, like table salt, it's just a different size. Comes crushed up as a mineral called halite, whatever. Got that. And I've got some normal water and a magnetic stir. And those are gonna be our solute and solvent. And unsurprisingly to just about anyone, I can add the salt to the water and it will dissolve. As I add more, more salt to the water, it's going to become more and more concentrated, and it's being more and more salt dissolved in the same amount of water. That's really all we're doing with math today, is just talking about how much solutes in a solvent. The idea really isn't that different than just like density, like grams per cubic meter. Well, now it's just going to be like moles per liter. So don't let this get too scary for us, because all we're really doing is just saying how much is dissolved in something. So the first thing we want to do is talk about units. Um, our name for this unit is going to be called molarity. Molarity, the first thing I do when I see this word molarity is I see the word molar, like moles. So my definition is going to be based on moles somehow, and the definition is the number of moles of solute, the thing being dissolved, per liter of the thing doing dissolving the solvent you often see me write solution because dissolving it doesn't change the volume significantly. So it's the moles per liter. So our units are going to be moles per liter, not grams per liter, that would be a density, or moles per milliliter, that doesn't tell me what I'm after. We need our volumes when we're doing the math to go into the equation as liters, and we need our moles to go in as moles. We represent molarity with a capital M. It's not the script M that we're used to from molar mass. Uh, be careful. This can confuse people for a little bit of time. It's just a capital M for molarity. In a minute or two, it makes sense to you as you do it once or twice. And sometimes you'll hear me call it like molar concentration. A molar concentration is the exact same thing as the molarity of a solution. And either thing is really just asking you to use this equation, which is the moles of solute divided by the liters of solution. And then once you've done that division, that ratio, stick moles per liter as a unit on the end to it. Uh, we're going to need a new board, so wonderful. So 
Um, one more note is that we normally write molarity with these brackets around it, like square brackets. So what we're not doing is using like curly braces like this or parentheses. We've got to be using our square brackets. So bad, good. And we put them around the name of the solute. So in the example we just did with the road salt, let's say it was just all sodium chloride, I could put square brackets around NaCl and say it's equal to 0.15 M, which is there's 0.15 molar concentration of the sodium chloride in the solution. So when you, you see those brackets around an equation, what they're really saying is this is how many moles of solute per liters of solution are present for, in this case, sodium chloride. We don't have to use a molar unit, like a big M. We could just write moles per liter if that's easier for you to understand. Both of these are perfectly acceptable and perfectly doable. Uh, so in a question, you might just be asking, like, uh, what is the molar concentration of calcium carbonate? And that will be it. And that will be, you need to say, oh yeah, Mr. Frank, I know what that is. Those square brackets mean you need me to figure this part out. So when I'm in class, you're going to see me write these square brackets most of the time because, let's face it, I'm lazy. Like now, when I need a new board, and another one appears, albeit missing an apostrophe. So let's say I want to make three different molar solutions of CuSO4. Maybe I want to run a test to see if concentration impacts a reaction in some way. And I might check, uh, let's say, a 20th of a mole, 0.15, and 0.3 mole per liter, three different molar concentrations. And the question is, I'm in a lab, I actually need to make these solutions up. I can't just like go to the store and buy solutions in this concentration, at least in any way I know. So I just need to get the chemical and start with it. So the question is, uh, how many moles do I need to make this? So I'm going to be working with, say, let's make 100 milliliters of each. Why not? So again, our solution here is going to be molarity equals moles per liter. So let's just set up for the 0 0.5 molar here. Okay, so I need 0 0.5 molar. That means I need 0 0.5 molar goes in for the molarity. So 0 0.5 moles per liter. And I just said, this is given to you in the problem, just to be clear, this is what I'm looking to make that I need a hundred milliliters of solution, why not? And I need to know how many moles it's going to take. Now, this is not a hard problem to solve, but I've got one issue. I said hundred milliliters, and quite clearly the units of molarity need liters. So before I actually do the math, I need to take this hundred milliliters and turn it into liters by dividing by a thousand. Right, milli to liter. Okay. So I actually have a tenth of a liter of solution I'm going to make. And now I can solve for x here, my number of moles. Well, this is just over 1. So I could just cross multiply. So I get like 0 0.1 times 0 0.05 equals x, or x equals 0 0.005 mole. So I just need. Uh, a pretty small amount of copper sulfate here to make my solution. This is my final answer for how many moles I need. And actually, I already worked out how many moles I need for each of my situations. So here's the one we just did. Our, our concentration, remember our square brackets mean concentration. I'm probably out of the picture there, my apologies. My square brackets mean concentration. Well, then I just do the math, the cross multiplication, and out comes the number. Again, look, in each of these, I've converted my 100 milliliters to liters, so the molarity works out. I just cross multiply, the same thing works out, and I know how much CuSO4 I need. That's a problem, though, because. Ignore the bell. Uh, because those aren't grams. So of course I've got another problem here, which is I've got moles, I actually need grams, so I just need to multiply by the molar mass. In the lab, CuSO4 comes with water mixed into it, so the molar mass of a single mole of CuSO4 actually is 250 here. I just got that from the periodic table, right? This is just 
the kind of math we've been doing. So instead of sitting here and making me type, let's just clap our hands and let the board do the math. So all I'm doing is multiplying the number of moles by the molar mass. 0 0.005 times 250 gives me 1.25. 0 0.015 times 250 gives me 3.75. Of course, I want to make a 3 tenth molar solution, and I know 1.5. I could just multiply it by 2 or do the math again, and so I get that number of grams. So to make what's going on here actually happen, if I want to make 100 milliliters of each of these, I just need to dissolve 1.25, 3.75, and 7.5 grams respectively into that amount of distilled water. It has to be distilled, otherwise the ions won't actually work this out exactly. Um, so let's do it. Let's show you what the difference of these looks like. Let's, let's head over to the lab a little more properly, okay? So to actually prepare the solutions, we need to uh, grab our balance and weigh a boat, and we need to get 1.25 grams. So grab a uh, scoop here of the reagent and add it to the boat. Hey, look at that. And I'll go ahead and prepare the others up here really fast. And once we do that, I'll show you how to make the solutions. So you can see how much each amount of copper sulfate is. And behind it, the volumetric flask where I used to prepare the solution. You can see how much more copper sulfate we need to dissolve, for instance, to get a 0.3 molar uh, versus a 0 0.05 molar. Well, six times more. And you can tell in the way boats there, it's six times more. So. In the lab, you normally would add that solute into the volumetric flask and then add distilled water and then add distilled water until it's all the way up to the top here on that graduated line and the bottom of the meniscus is just barely touching it when your eye is level. Then you've prepared the solution, as long as you've done your math right, to the amount you said. So I'm going to go ahead and add some water to each, dissolve down the solute, stir it up with a magnetic stirrer for you, and then show you what each solution looks like. Hold tight. So I've gone ahead and prepared the solutions, and as you can see, the more concentrated the solution, that is the higher its molarity, the darker this particular solution gets. Our 0 0.05 solution is pretty translucent to our 3 tenths of a molar solution, pretty opaque. And so you can kind of judge in some cases how concentrated something is by appearance, but many ions are colorless and that wouldn't work. But in this case, it's pretty obvious. Um, so there are my three solutions. I could actually make these way more concentrated. A fully concentrated solution of copper sulfate may look something like this. You can see the crystals forming along the top as it evaporates. Um, you can see it can actually get much darker blue than we already are. So I can dissolve far more copper sulfate into solution than I already have. But these were the examples we chose. So there you go. These would be three samples ready to run through a lab. Now, before we finish up here at the video lecture and your sub gives you your homework, you've got one more thing to do, which is I want to go through just two quick, quick examples using the digital whiteboard here to show you how to do the things in the homework. Because maybe it's clear what we're doing, but the exact how to do the math, I know will get a few people confused. So let's go through a couple examples here so your homework is good. So... I'm going to do a few examples for your homework in case you get stuck. That way you can come back to this video, uh, which, by the way, is on my homework, and uh, get those points kind of unstuck. So I'm looking at number four here that asked me to find the moles present in 0.256 milliliter of potassium iodide with a molar concentration of 0.256. Um, so I know that molarity is moles per liter, so... Let's see, I know that my molarity in this is 0.256, so 0.256 equals, let's see, moles, that's what I'm looking for, so that would be X per liter. I'm given milliliters here. Milliliters aren't liters, so I need to make that into liters by dividing by 1,000, so I get 0.256, therefore... X equals 0.256 kind of times 0.256 again, 0.256 squared. In this case, normally there's going to be two numbers. Uh, so 0.256 squared, that tells me I have 0 0.0655 mole of potassium iodide. Now, in honesty, normally on these first six problems in your homework, 
The chemical it is isn't going to matter just because I'm asking about moles. This could have asked about moles of ammonium nitrate, and it would have been the same exact answer. Uh, the molar mass in this case doesn't matter. If I was asking about grams, then it would. But for right now, we're going to say that's easy. Uh, now number 10, the instructions say how many liters of water are needed to make a solution of concentration 0.125 molar starting with 10 grams of CaCl2. And again, the same thing, molarity equals moles per liter. So I'm going to get moles and divided by liters. So liters are what I'm looking for. So my molarity, I know that, 0.125, and that's going to equal... Uh, let's see, some number of moles divided by some number of liters. Liters, what I'm looking for is X. So I need to figure out how many moles are in 10 grams of CaCl2. And, well, I already know how to do that because that's just going to be grams divided by molar mass. So, let's see, 10 divided by the molar mass of calcium chloride. Calcium chloride, if you go to the periodic table, calcium is 40 chlorine is like 35, and if you add them together uh, and take into the fact there's two chlorine, you're going to get 110.98. So when you divide 10 over 110.98, you get 0.090. So 0 0.090 is here. I can now cross multiply. So I'm going to get 0 0.090 equals 0.125x or x equals 0 0.090 divided by 0.125. And if you work that out, that comes to a final answer of 0 0.72 liter. So to make the solution, you need to add just under 3 quarters of a liter of water to that 10 grams of CaCl2. So the very dilute solution is 0.15 molar tends to be. Um, and yeah, that's, that's really all there are to the whole front page. It's just going to be kind of plug and chug, and it should be pretty straightforward. Now, let's go look at the back page, which gets people scared because they're just word problems, but they're actually not much different. So on the back, like let's take a look at what I think is the hardest problem on the back, number 17. It asks, what's the mass of iron 3 chloride? Well, that's FeCl3. Needed to prepare 1 liter of 0.255 molar solution. Okay, so let's see, molarity equals moles per liter. That's going to be used in every single question. So let's see, I know I'm looking for 0.255 because they gave it to me in the problem up here. And let's see, I know I'm looking for, let's see, here's a liter. So I have one in my denominator. So I just need to know how many moles are here. Well, cross multiplication x equals 0.255 mole of iron 3 chloride. But I'm not asking about moles, I'm asking for mass. So I need to take that moles, and let's see, moles times molar mass equals grams. So 0.255 mole times the molar mass of FeCl3. Let's see, iron is 55.8, chlorine is 35 times 3, that's 162.2. So there we go, and that's going to tell me how many grams I need total, which is 41.36 gram. And that's it. That's all we're doing for these problems. Most of them, once you get the hang of them, are a refreshing breath from stoichiometry, which took, you know, a long time and had all these steps. And here we are back to just basically density. Uh, if you don't remember how to do moles and grams, of course, it's going to be very difficult. Um, but once you get one or two of these to work for you, you're good. Uh, your homework will be due to me on Monday, and I'll answer a few questions about it in class. But please give it your best effort before then so your questions aren't just, I don't get it. Uh, come in with a, I don't understand this step, and we'll be able to move forward. Otherwise, have a great weekend, and I'll see you back on Monday.